hey guys welcome or welcome back to my channel so i didn't do my 33 week update but i'm here for my 34 week update so i am 34 weeks and one day today i had my last growth scan yesterday so i'm going to talk about that talk about obviously my symptoms like i always do and talk to you guys about when my induction is probably going to end up being and then also we have like most everything's set up now so like as you can see it's just getting more exciting i got that little hanging door thing to hold some things because i was just like i had some stuff that just didn't have a place and it was driving me absolutely crazy and let me just show you i'm sure you all who have had new newborns already know but i still want to just show you how freaking small these diapers are and these aren't even the smallest ones okay isn't that so cute? This is a newborn diaper. Look how little. And I have preemie ones over there that I haven't opened up, but I didn't have them yet. Like they were one of the things that I had on my registry and someone ordered for me because it's like you really can't even get preemie diapers in the store from what I have seen. I can barely find newborn, but just look how tiny. And then there's smaller ones in there, but I'm waiting to open those up. I just wanted to go ahead and like fill this thing with some stuff and um, I'm sure the baby will be in newborn fairly quickly. So I was like, may as well just go ahead and put the diapers in there that I had at the time. Anyways, it's just crazy to me to think that I'm gonna be putting those diapers on my baby in a few weeks. Um, hopefully there's no issues. I'm really hoping for no NICU time, but I am gonna talk about that a bit more when I tell you about my growth scan update so all right let's just start with my symptoms i guess get that out of the way because it's more that's not super exciting <laughs> as usual i throw up in the mornings most mornings not every morning take my medicine i'm good for most of the day usually i don't feel nauseous at night um unless i have unless my heart burns acting up really bad and that can end up making me feel sick so of course my heartburn has been bad but the pepsid ac has been keeping it um, from like absolutely killing me. Although I do still have to take Tums in the middle of the night. Last night was bad. I had to take, like I took two. And then there was another time when I was like, I really don't want to take another one. Cause I know with Serenity, when I took too many at night, they ended up making me feel sick and I would throw up. So I drank a little bit of milk instead. Thank gosh that helped me fall back asleep. And that was all I needed. My skin has just been so, so dry. Like this has been for a while but like when i get in the water my legs just itch like horribly so bad um i'm having dry spots on my hands and stuff that just itch randomly i don't know if this is related but my scalp like especially this back area it just will hit me and it will itch so so bad um i don't know if um maybe it's uh, like seboric dermatitis or something like that that's unrelated to pregnancy or it prob honestly i think it's probably just part of the symptoms that I'm having because if, there, if a lot of my other skin is dry it makes sense that my head would be dry also. I told you guys for a while that I was like avoiding Charlie horses. I got so many of them with one of the kids. I don't know if it was Mason or Serenity but I got so many in my feet and my calves. Um, So I learned this time like when I would stretch in the middle of the night I could stretch but I had to like make sure my foot was like flat footed pulled back when I was doing it and I was only half awake when I did it one night. <laughs> Uh, I could feel it coming and I tried to stop it by pulling my foot back and it was too late and it freaking hurt. It wasn't in my foot, it was one in my calf. It hurt so, so bad. Like I I knew they were bad, but I forgot they were that bad. Like it was the most painful thing and I, I couldn't even reach forward to pull my foot back until the pain like slowed down a little bit. So that was fun. I hope I don't have any more of those, but I have made it close to the end. So I'm hoping I can avoid those if I just keep myself from like trying to stretch out my legs at night but my sciatic nerve there have been moments when it has like like a little bit of pain is shot through there's been moments when I've felt like if I exert any type of pressure or anything to it then it I know it would hurt really really bad so that's fun um but yeah it's nothing new though no new symptoms I don't think just a lot of the same irritating stuff but as I say all the time I'm just grateful I'm not nauseous like I was in the first and second trimester because that was just horrible. Okay, so as far as the baby, because I can't even really go off these apps, 
anymore since this baby's so small i am just gonna kind of update you based on my growth scan so the growth scan um that i had yesterday was a month from the last one at the last one the baby was approximately two pounds seven ounces keep in mind that these things can be literally like a pound off or more one way or the other i'm hoping it they end up being off and the baby ends up bigger but anyways so in a month the baby gained a little over a pound because yesterday the estimated weight was three pounds and nine ounces i was hoping for more than that i was really hoping for close to four pounds but the fact that it is did gain over a pound is good like i mean we're getting close to four pounds and four pounds is a lot better than a baby coming out at two or three pounds i just really wanted the baby to be at least five but i, I don't think that's gonna happen so right now i'm just hoping for four and a half like if we can make it to four and a half we have three weeks left for the baby to grow at least three weeks left so that's about how big the baby is but everything else looks fine like the doctor came in and honestly did not have much to say she's just said everything looks really stable right now like the cord flow looks good the fluid looks really good still and the baby's fine and moving and practicing breathing so pretty much but because it's still below or at 1%, depending on like which measurements were taken, um, it is going to like for sure be a 37 week induction now. And I'm so excited that on Tuesday, so on Tuesday I have a 945 appointment. It's an NST, a non-stress test. So I'll go, I go to the main hospital building for that. That takes about 30 minutes or so. And then I have a 1045 appointment, so I have to go into the parking garage, get in my car, drive around back to the women's um, pavilion or the women's whatever, the wing with the um, OBGYNs and all that. And I have a regular, what would be like a regular pregnancy appointment. And at that, I'm almost positive that because of what my doctor said at my last one, that that is going to be the day that they schedule my induction. Like obviously not scheduling it for that day, but when I'm there, they're gonna schedule it for some time in my 37th week. It could be when I'm exactly 37 weeks, it could be when I'm 37 weeks and four days, and it could be all the way up to like the day before I'm 38 weeks, but it will be sometime in that week. And I am obviously hoping for earlier than later because it scares me that oh, once you get over 37 weeks, the chance for stillbirth is higher with growth restricted babies. So like, just go ahead. I mean, like a couple days inside is not going to give as much um, growth to the baby as it would if we would just get it out. Because a lot of times babies that aren't getting what they need on the inside grow so much better on the outside. So a couple days is not going to matter. So let's just make it to 37 weeks, but 37 weeks and no days 37 weeks and unfortunately the weekend is right after i turn 37 weeks so the next available one i would not be like i'd be like 37 weeks and three days but one of those two days would be amazing so i'll know hopefully my baby's birthday in three days so that's really exciting and really really scary too because it's just scary knowing how small and little this little one is and being very afraid of complications. Um, I'm scared that the baby won't handle induction well um, and I might end up with an emergency C-section. I've never had a C-section before. I've had two inductions that went perfectly, although with Mason, they did say his heart was starting to decelerate a bit and they might have to use a vacuum, but they didn't, like I got him out. But otherwise, like I've really had no issues and I'm terrified of having a C-section especially an emergency c-section that's a lot different than just having something like calm and scheduled out but i do want to try to have an induction and hopefully it is successful anyways i'm scared of that then i'm scared when the baby comes out i'm everyone's terrified that your baby's not gonna be breathing when it comes out you want to hear that scream like i want to hear the cry the lungs are hopefully going to be fully developed in the next week or two and then i'm then, then like the most common things that tiny babies have trouble with are feeding um maintaining their blood sugar levels and their temperature so that's why just the bigger the baby probably the better chance of being able to maintain those things but can't really control that all we can do is try to make it all the way to 37 weeks 
and get this baby out and finally get to hold them so I just can't wait like I'm so excited but also it's just it sucks that it's gonna be like my scariest birth so anyways that is pretty much everything I got some pictures from the ultrasound I'll put in and then also every single time not every single time like multiple times I've been there they've mentioned the hair and it's just um they didn't take a picture this time but it's so cute I think it's to me it looks like it's actually getting longer too so I'm hoping it's a full head of thick hair and not just like little bits it's fine of course either I had one baby with insane full hair like no baby should have that much until they're like over a year old and then I had the next one with barely any hair and hair that like literally just stayed the same and didn't grow until he was three four or five months old and it started growing a little bit more so doesn't matter but it would be so cool if the baby did have a head full of hair so I'm excited to see excited to see the color of the eyes and all that so it it will be here very soon I have got almost everything done like I said we've set up um there's some stuff in it right now but that is the bedside bassinet and we also got a bed frame so the bed so it sits perfectly right next to the bed I've got a lot set up that I'll show you guys in probably another video but yeah everything's coming together I really just need to get a rocking chair and then like there's like one or two other things that I want to get but I might not end up getting because I also have to have, make sure I have the money for newborn pictures because that's super important to me so um yeah the rocking chair is like the last thing and then I think I'll be able to like breathe but we have a couple weeks to go I have a couple paychecks left and I could go get it this weekend but I think I'm gonna wait just make sure on the money situation because like I said I just want to make sure I can get the newborn pictures done so um yeah I'll probably might wait like one more week to go get the rocking chair and just see how much I have left over towards newborn pictures with if I were to get a rocking chair so yeah that's pretty much everything and then I'm gonna show you my belly I almost forgot about that actually so I'm gonna show you my belly and then we will be done. Okay, this is a really bad shirt to be trying to show you with the shirt on, but, uh, oh well. So this is 34 weeks with the shirt on. <laughs> you know, it's so hard to see and I've got that thing in the way now, so. Okay, and then we're gonna measure. I can barely see anymore. Like I can barely like look over my freaking belly. What is it? Yeah. Okay. So we're about at 39 and a half. I think that's where we were. Like it seems like I move up a tiny, tiny bit every week or two, but like not a ridiculous amount. So maybe we might be closer to 40, but somewhere around 39 and a half. Okay. Um, and then these lovely stretch marks. I got them, I think, with Serenity, but they were not noticeable. And then with Mason, they got worse. And then now they're just like, like, see, you can see them in the certain lighting, but it's fine. That's pretty much all I have so far. So there's from the front. Here it is from the side. I definitely have a bump now, and it's sad. Once I finally get it, then it's going to be gone. <laughs> in just a few weeks but oh well and then here is the other side so all right so that's everything and yeah so now i just have like a bunch of appointments that i'm trying to keep up with every single week on fridays i still have doppler checks but no more growth scans and on tuesdays i have nsts they switch my days from thursday to tuesday so there wasn't such a big gap checking on baby and then i have my regular pregnancy appointments which are now also like one to two weeks apart <laughs> so it's a lot of appointments but we're getting there and it's not gonna be much longer so yep I'll see you guys next time bye